So in today's web dev tip, we're going to start working on our stats application properly. And the first thing that we're going to do with it is to actually set up a request to actually get the stats information from the API. And then we can work on actually displaying that to the user. So we're going to do a few things to get that up and running today. The first thing we're going to do is just go over into the environments file and just let the application know where the API is located. So we did something similar with the, uh, the front end, the web application that we're using to generate the URLs. Uh, so we'll just say the API URL uh, for the local host. So our development version uh, is just going to be running on localhost uh, port 3333. Uh, so we'll save that. And then in production, uh, when we actually deploy this as well, uh, don't forget we've already set the pipeline up. So uh, that will work automatically for us. Uh, we want to set the uh, API location uh, to be uh, rick and roll dot me. Uh, forward slash API uh, because we've got Nginx proxying our node application uh, and mounting it onto the API path. Uh, so that's all we need to do for environment. We've got that set up now for both development and uh, production environments. So what we're going to do is in our main.ts file for the uh, stats application, uh, we're just going to make a call to the backend API to get the stats uh, for the particular path, uh, for the particular URL that the user is trying to access stats for. So uh, main.ts is basically going to be all of our code uh, for the application. Uh, so we're going to say window.onload and we'll pass in a function. Uh, so once the window has loaded, uh, we're going to run this code automatically. And in essence, all we're going to really do at this point is just make a fetch request uh, to get the data uh, from the back end. So we'll say we're going to call fetch and we simply want to do a get request uh, to the back end API. And so we want to call uh, the environment uh, file that we just created. If I just find it from down here and uh, get the API URL. And then from there, uh, we just want to uh, call the ID of the short URL that we want to access and then forward slash stats. Of course, this won't work at the moment because we need to replace this ID uh, parameter here with an actual uh, string uh, for a particular short URL that we're going to access. But we'll do that in just one second. Uh, but that, that is the fetch request in essence. And then we're going to be calling uh, the then uh, function of the promise that's returned, uh, which gives us response. And from there, we want to uh, return the result of the response.json. And then all we're going to do for the moment is just console log that data out. Uh, and as I say, in the future tutorials, what we'll do is we'll take the data in and actually populate the web page as well. Okay, so as mentioned, this isn't going to work. We need to actually replace this with a different variable. Uh, and that variable is going to come up from the path of the URL that's being accessed. And as we saw yesterday, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, but essentially what I'm going to do uh, for the ID is take the window uh, dot location and the path name and then just split it on the forward slashes in the path. And we want to take the second item out of there, uh, which if we go back to our web browser, uh, you can see this is what we had uh, yesterday. So uh, doing a split on the path name in this uh, way, when we've got the uh, uh, ID of the URL after the forward slash stat, uh, the ID will appear in the third item. So that's uh, index position number two in the array. Uh, so we'll just save that into our variable uh, called ID. So what we can do in here then now is just say uh, the ID is replaced in the URL. Uh, and now when the window loads in our uh, stats application, we're going to send this fetch request automatically uh, and try and get the, the stats for the URL with that particular ID that's been provided in the path. So if you go back on over to the browser now, that should be working automatically for us already. Uh, you can see we're getting an error and I'll show you why in just a second, but you can see in the network tab, if we just open that up, you can see we're sending a request uh, to the API uh, with a particular ID, uh, 1234, which is coming straight from the URL in the browser. And then we've got forward slash stats. Now, the reason we're getting the error is because obviously we've got no short URLs with the IDs of 1234. Uh, so the application itself is handling that quite well. Uh, it's just logging out the uh, response to the console. Uh, and we will deal with that uh, in a future tutorial. Uh, but if we just go ahead and create a new short URL uh, from our web interface, uh, don't forget we need something that's uh, in the local uh, database, not something on the remote machine. So if we go back over into the stats application and just paste in that particular ID, you can see this time the request is made and it's good. We're getting a 200 status code back. And the data that's been logged out to the console uh, is actually the 
details of the URL in the database. And of course, there's no redirects at the moment because we haven't actually created anything. Uh, I guess if we were to actually copy that and uh, just visit it uh, in our browser, you can see that's uh, done the redirect for us. And then if we go back into the stats and just uh, refresh the page just to force that uh, request to go through again, uh, you should see this time in the data uh, that is returned from the short URL. You can see we've got uh, the you can see the redirects array has been populated with a single entry. So we've got the date of when this was accessed, and you can see it was accessed from the local machine. And so what we're going to do is uh, with that data that's being pulled back from the API into the stats application, is we're going to generate a table or something uh, just to display that information uh, to the user. So when they visit this page, uh, they will actually see. Uh, the uh, stats for that particular URL uh, based on the uh, ID that they pass in after forward slash stats. But there you go, there's a first step in our stats application being set up. In the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at the styling and just see how we can share that across the different applications, the front end app and the stats application uh, within our NX Mono repo. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.